Imagine this. You're standing at the edge of human history, on the surface of the moon. There's no sound, no air, no life. Just an endless sea of gray dust beneath your feet and the black void of space stretching forever above. You take one small step forward, feeling weightless, free. But then something goes wrong. Your suit malfunctions. And in seconds, the air hisses out. Now it's just you. No spacesuit. No oxygen. Only your fragile human body standing in one of the most hostile places in the universe. What happens next? Could you survive, even for a single minute? Let's find out. What if you tried to survive 24 hours on the moon without a spacesuit? The first 30 seconds. The vacuum's grip. The moment you lose your spacesuit seal, everything changes. The moon's atmosphere is practically non-existent. A pure vacuum. That means there's no air pressure, no oxygen, and no mercy. Your very first breath would be your last. As you exhale, the air in your lungs rushes out violently. Try to inhale again? Impossible! Your chest would feel like it's caving in, your lungs collapsing under zero pressure. In less than 10 seconds, your blood oxygen levels plummet. You wouldn't suffocate in the normal sense. You'd black out as your brain starves for air. Your skin tightens. Your saliva and tears begin to boil. Not from heat, but from the vacuum. Tiny bubbles form on your tongue. Your eyes sting. You can't scream, because there's no air to carry the sound. The silence is absolute. In the vast emptiness of space, you are already dying. Quietly, invisibly, instantly. The first five minutes, the cold and the heat. If somehow, miraculously, your body stays conscious, the environment itself becomes your executioner. The moon's surface swings between extremes, burning hot under the sun and deathly cold in the shadows. On the sunlit side, Temperatures soar above 250 degrees Fahrenheit, or 120 Celsius, hot enough to cook flesh in seconds. Step into the darkness, and it drops to minus 250 degrees Fahrenheit, or minus 160 Celsius, colder than any place on Earth. Your exposed skin would start to burn and freeze simultaneously, depending on which way you turn. Without air, there's no convection, so the heat doesn't move like it does on Earth. Instead, your body radiates heat directly into space. Within minutes, your skin begins to crack and blister. Your blood vessels burst under the strain. But there's no blood dripping. It would instantly vaporize. Your muscles stiffen. Your joints lock. Your body caught between fire and ice becomes a silent, motionless statue on an airless world. The first hour, the moon's silent desolation. Suppose, somehow, your body endures, unconscious, frozen, but intact. Now the moon begins its slow, silent assault on your remains. Without air, there's no sound, no wind, no smell, nothing. The only movement is the faint glint of sunlight on the dust. Every step leaves a perfect footprint that could last for millions of years. And now, your body becomes one of those marks. Permanent. There's no bacteria to decompose you. No oxygen to rust your bones. No gravity to crush or bury you. You'd simply remain. Your skin dries like parchment. Your veins crystallize. The fluids in your body freeze solid, every cell perfectly preserved in the cold vacuum. You'd look peaceful, but in truth, you'd become a monument to human fragility. Six hours later, the eternal light. As the hours crawl by, the sun continues its relentless blaze across the lunar horizon. The light on the moon is harsh, unfiltered, blinding white, with no atmosphere to scatter it. The shadows are pitch black and the brightness unbearable. Your frozen body lies half in sunlight, 
half in darkness. The exposed side begins to bake, slowly charring under the solar radiation. The dark side remains frozen, untouched. A perfect, horrific balance of fire and ice. Micrometeorites, tiny fragments of rock and metal, rain down silently, striking the ground around you. Each one is no bigger than a grain of sand, yet they hit with the force of bullets. There's no sound, no warning, just the invisible violence of space itself. If one of them hits you, it would puncture your skin, leave a crater, and keep going, because there's nothing to stop it. The moon doesn't care who you are. It doesn't protect. It only preserves. Twelve hours later, the endless night. Now, the lunar horizon begins to shift. The day is fading, slowly giving way to night. But unlike Earth, night on the moon lasts fourteen Earth days. Darkness spreads like a curtain, and the temperature begins to fall. The heat radiates away into the void until there's nothing left. No warmth, no light, no life. Your body, once exposed to blistering heat, is now frozen solid again. If anyone ever came across you, you'd look like a sculpture of ice and stone, fragile, lifeless, and eternal. The stars above shine sharper than ever, piercing through the blackness. Earth hangs in the distance, a small blue marble glowing with life, so close, and yet infinitely far. That's the cruel beauty of the moon. It lets you see home, but never return to it. Twenty-four hours later, the final truth. A full day has passed, and the truth is clear. You never stood a chance. The moon's vacuum would have destroyed your lungs in seconds. Your exposed skin blisters under unfiltered sunlight while freezing solid in the shadows. Radiation from the sun and cosmic rays pierces deep into your cells. Dehydration leaves every cell screaming for water that isn't there. Micrometeorites strike relentlessly, each one a tiny hammer against your fragile form. But death here is hauntingly permanent. There's no atmosphere. No bacteria, no wind, nothing to erase you. You would remain, frozen and rigid, a monument to human fragility in an eternal, barren landscape. Hundreds or thousands of years from now, explorers might find you, perfectly preserved, your terrified expression frozen, every detail of your body intact. The lunar dust would coat you like a shroud, making you look like a sculpture of survival and failure. Above you, the Earth would hang in the sky, small, fragile, ye alive, a reminder of a home that you can never reach. Your frozen form would be a silent message. Humans dared to step where they were never meant to survive. On the moon, death is not fleeting, it's eternal, unforgiving and the story of your ambition and failure would endure forever. So, can you survive 24 hours on the moon without a spacesuit? The answer is clear, no. Not even close. But the fact that we even ask that question says something extraordinary about us. Humans are the only species willing to walk into death's shadow, just to see what's there. We dream of touching the impossible, we look at the moon and see not danger, but destiny. Because in the end, survival isn't just about staying alive, it's about daring to explore, even when the odds are against us. So next time you look up at that glowing sphere in the sky, remember, it's beautiful, it's deadly, and it's waiting. So, would you dare to survive even a minute on the moon? If this story blew your mind, hit that like button, share it with someone who loves space, and subscribe for more mind-bending what-if stories, because the next journey might just be your last.